express our appreciation and thanks to all the folks in the Sugar Bowl who have made this a uh, really special week for our players. Uh, everything is going very smoothly. The organization is really great. There's a lot of tradition here with the Sugar Bowl and the University of Alabama, and it's um, certainly been everything uh, that we expected in terms of first-class hospitality. I'd also like to take a moment to wish everybody out there a Happy New Year. Uh, we have a lot of fans, a lot of supporters, a lot of folks that um, we appreciate. And I know this is a time that everybody makes resolutions, which means um, all about what you're going to do in the future. Um, so I hope that um, those resolutions are something that you have a lot of good luck with. And I would only say that uh, if you persist at the right things, you'll have a chance to have good luck. And if you resist the right things, that'll help as well. So uh, hopefully everybody will have a great year. Uh, I think this uh, game is a great opportunity for the players, and uh, we're playing against a, a very, very good team. Uh, we played them several years now, so it makes it a little bit of a rivalry game in circumstances like this. And um, it seems like we've had really good preparation for the game, and I think it's time to go out and play and uh, just see who the best team is. So uh, I think our guys are excited, and I've been pleased with the preparation and focus that they've had. So. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, tomorrow night. At this time, we'll open the floor for questions. Uh, reminder, please identify yourself by name and media outlet. Middle of the room, second row. Coach, uh, much was made of the fact that, you know, you had some injuries at linebacker for your final regular season game. What is the status of those linebackers now heading into this big game? I know Dylan, I think, is out, but the rest of the guys. Well, I think everyone, it's been pretty well documented, I guess, that uh, Sean Dion Hamilton is out for the game. Dylan Moses is out for the game. Uh, those guys both play the same position, but Mac Wilson will be available to play in a game who was out the previous games. And I think there are two outside linebackers, Terrell Lewis and Christian Miller, um, who actually played a bit, you know, in the Auburn game, uh, but practiced very little leading up to the game. Uh, both of those guys are probably 100% now and have practiced enough to be effective in the game. So uh, Hootie Jones is out for the game, uh, I think. But so what has been documented as, as players that are out is pretty much where we're at, and the guys that are coming back are coming back. But it's still two inside backers at the same position uh, that are missing. And I think the challenge is, is those guys were both signal callers. Uh, and in no huddle type defenses, you know, the signal caller is very, very important to get the signal, get it communicated, uh, help get the defense lined up. So Max very capable. He just doesn't have a lot of experience doing it, but I'm sure he'll do a good job in the game. Next question. Middle of the room, second row. I, I, I sense a little lack of intensity in this group this morning. I mean, um, I have a team meeting today with the players at 215, and I hope they're not of the mindset that I see here today. <laughs> Andrea Adelson, ESPN.com. Nick Dabo just said he wouldn't be surprised if there were more matchups in the playoffs uh, between you guys. Do you feel like that's something we could keep seeing given where you are as a program and where Clemson is as a program? Uh, it wouldn't be surprising to me. I'm not much on making predictions, but, um, you know, each year you have, I think they have a lot of good players. I think they have a lot of good young players. I think we have a lot of good players and we have a lot of good young players, but uh, each year, you know, you lose a part of your team. You have guys go out for the draft. Uh, you have your seniors who have done a really good job for you. Uh, everybody has new roles that they have to take on in the next season. So uh, it's almost like you're rebuilding your team each and every year, in my opinion. Uh, and it's a totally new challenge as to how people embrace the roles that they have, the leadership. Um, so. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to continue to 
um, have a team that can compete at a very high standard and have opportunities like this in the future. It's certainly a goal of the program. Next question, right hand side of the room. Um, Nick, uh, Rick Bunnell, Shoulder Observer. Um, Coach, yesterday Todd Blackledge was talking about how he anticipated that if people expect the kind of wide open, high scoring game that you guys had last season, that really isn't necessarily reflective of these teams this year. I, I wondered if you saw a game that might not be up in the 30s with a whole lot of back and forth scoring. Well, uh, I think it's very difficult to predict. I, I think both teams have the capability of scoring points, but I also think that both teams have pretty good defensive players. Uh, I think that our two defenses are one and two in scoring defense, and I'm not sure who's first and who's second. But um, So that means these teams have been difficult to score on for whatever reasons. Uh, but we've had some of those scenarios in the past, in the games that we played in the past, and they have been high-scoring games. So um, really hard to predict, in my opinion, uh, as to how this game will turn out. Um, I think there's probably going to be six or seven plays in the game that will make a, a huge impact on the outcome of the game. And unfortunately, as a player and as a competitor, you never know when those plays are coming. So. Uh, that's why you got to play one play at a time for 60 minutes in the game, and uh, hopefully when you get an opportunity to make a play uh, that will have an impact on the game, you'll be there in the right position to do it. So, um, But I, I, I really don't have a great feel for how this game might turn out. Far right side of the room. Coach, uh, Mitch Gibbs, WGSO Radio. Do, are you happy with the format? that we have in place right now, would you like to see it expanded to six or eight teams? Because there's always a couple of teams who feel like they should be here. Well, but I, I said this when we had two teams and you all wanted to go to four teams. We had two teams, there was always somebody that thought they should be one of the teams. If you have four teams, there's going to be somebody that thinks they should be here. You have 65 teams in a basketball tournament or 68 or whatever, then you have a two-hour show on ESPN about the teams that didn't get in. So I don't think it makes any difference how many teams we have. There's always going to be somebody who thinks they should have been, somebody else should have been out and they should have been in. Look, I've talked about this a lot in the past. Uh, and I know there's a lot of media attention that surrounds playoff games. And there's a lot of interest, and I don't deny that fact. Uh, but I think one of the most significant things about college football that's provided a lot of positive self-gratification for a lot of players through the years that uh, have had successful seasons is the reward of going to a bowl game. And I think the more playoff games you have, the more it minimizes the importance of bowl games. Uh, so. If we're going to increase the, the, the playoffs, I, I think you're going to minimize the importance of bowl games. I said this when we had a playoff, uh, so and it did to some degree. Um, so I, I think somebody out there just needs to figure out, you know, what is best for college football, and let's go down that road. But I don't think that if we expand the playoffs, that bowl games and the playoff are going to be able to co coexist very well. Uh, and I don't think that's a good thing for college football. Again, on the right side of the room. AP Stedham, WHEP Sports, Radio Baldwin, Foley, Alabama. Coach, speaking of intensity, is this a high intensity team or are they more business like in their approach? And do you have a preference? Well, I, I think that uh, intensity is mental energy. And I think you can have a business like approach and have a lot of mental energy and high intensity. Uh, I think that we have some players on our team that uh, are very intense, uh, some that are a little more emotional, uh, some that are more a little more business-like, but I think that regardless of what their personality traits are, uh, they all want to try to take ownership for what they need to do to have a chance to be successful in the game, do their job well, so that the team has a chance to be successful in the game. So. Um, I don't think there's one particular formula of intensity versus business-like that 
really fits what playing winning football may be all about. Uh, we, we don't try to, uh, we want our players to have a personality uh, in terms of what they do. Uh, I know that we get, you know, sort of, I don't know, negatively impacted, criticized, whatever, for being too businesslike because that's kind of my personality. Um, but I don't think our team is that way, and I don't, I don't think our, all of our coaches are that way. Um, and quite frankly, I'm not always that way. So um, I, I guess whatever the formula that works to give you the chemistry on your team that you like, and I think that probably leadership, people taking ownership, uh, affecting each other. And I think when you talk about ownership, people think, well, I'm supposed to do my job. Well, I think that's probably true, but there's also people who take ownership for making sure everybody else on the team is doing their job. And not everybody's willing to do that, but I think that's a necessary ingredient to having a good team. Go back to the center of the room. Yeah, Nick, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN.com. I was just wondering how the semifinal Saturday goes for you, or semifinal day goes for you guys when there's another game going on, especially when it's before your game. Is there any monitoring? game on, hotel, locker room, any of that, or is it completely away from you guys until after your game? Well, I, I, I personally don't choose to watch other games. Um, that's me personally. We, we, don't, we don't have some kind of a rule that says you're not allowed to watch a football game on TV the day of the game. All right, so I'm sure we have some people that will want to watch and some people who don't. But it's a little bit of a distraction to me personally to get involved emotionally in watching another game um, the day that we play. So I, I usually choose not to do that. Back on the right side of the room. Um, LeBrian Ray, his status for Monday night, I know you touched on some of the injuries and just in general how you've seen him handle the situation being a young freshman and stepping up for other injuries this season. Well, LeBron Ray was a guy that we started out the season thinking that maybe we wouldn't play him, um, but we thought he was capable of playing, so we put him in the position of we're going to coach this guy and develop this guy so that if we need him to play, he can play. And he embraced that role very well, and we did need him to play, and he did play, and he played well. And um, he, his status for this game is he is available to play, uh, but he's also in this sort of the same situation that several of our players were for the Auburn game. They, they were medically cleared to play, uh, but they were limited in terms of the number of reps that they could get in practice. So their role in the game had to, had to reflect that. And I think that's where LeBron Ray is. But we're very pleased with him, and he's played very well for us. And I think he would be able to make a positive contribution in this game uh, if we can get – some plays out of them. Again, towards the center of the room in the front. Uh, Chris Lowe, ESPN. Nick, your third time in the playoff, what have you guys learned about preparing this format? How have you evolved? What's important, et cetera? Well, I, I think that when we started this, I think it was four years ago, um, we, we, we tried to because we were all in the culture of the bowl experience for our players, that we, we, were, we were trying to continue that they uh, have a bowl experience. I think that was the expectation of the players. And each year that we've played, uh, I see from a player's perspective, the outcome of the game being a much more significant um, priority than the bowl game. Just like our, our players choosing curfew one night at 12 o'clock and the rest of the nights 11. I mean, it was a battle to get them in at 2 o'clock in the morning when you used to go to bowl games in New Orleans years ago. So I, I think that's a mindset that the players that have experience in these games and they've had success and they understand um, the, the significance of that success, and they've also had failings and failures, uh, and they understand that. And 
I think that has become a little more of a priority, at least on our team, uh, from a player's perspective. We have time for one final question in the center of the room. Coach, can you talk about Sean Dion and what his presence has meant this week at practice and just what it's meant to you personally, how much of a veteran he has been on this team? Well, Sean Dion is uh, an outstanding individual, great person, really good competitor, um, great leader, um, very smart, intelligent, um, and he was voted the most inspirational player on our team by his teammates which I think speaks volumes for the respect they have for him. So his, and, and he embraced, where some players, if they're not playing, they, they, they can't even pay attention at practice. You know, they're just there because coach said they had to be there. But he's out there coaching the guys that are taking his place, teaching them, looking at the script. Um, and I think the players really appreciate that and because he's really showing leadership and taking an interest in helping somebody else for their benefit. And I think that's um, a really important part of um, being a good leader. And he's certainly embraced that role since he's been hurt. And I think it's been very helpful to the players. Okay, Coach, thank you for your time. All right, thank you all.